today, I, it is my hope and desire that we will continue with uh, part three and we'll actually get to try to do some new stuff in Moxie, okay? Um, so with that, um, let us, let's go ahead and roll straight into a couple of things. I wanna update you on one of the new tools that uh, I talked about yesterday in um, Workplace, and there was a post on this in Workplace yesterday about the automated migration tool that was just turned on this week in Moxie to allow you to import your contacts directly from either Zap or, um, or uh, Business Builder. Claire, you, you had a, a scoffing look on your face. Did you try it and did you have troubles? No, I have not tried it yet. You only noticed it yesterday, but I was so annoyed the fact that I've just sat there and done all that hard work. And then here comes a little magic button. So, well, <laughs> I, I hear you loud and clear. Some of us were in a different position. I don't know that, I think you probably would have learned more by doing it the way you did and you'll be better equipped to do it in the future. But there were some systems reasons. It wasn't arbitrary and just, hey, let's screw with everybody and not give them the tool until later. It's because it, it, it has to do with the provisioning of the system. And there are some things that had to happen on your Moxie websites that needed to be done in order for, to make that tool viable and, and workable. So that's why the delay, um, but it's there now. And if you have 100% of your contacts in your business builder or in your Zap, it's a fairly easy thing to migrate now. Um, and in case anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about or, um, or wants to know more, let me, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna show you what I have discovered thus far. And then we'll go from there. Um, all right, so on your Moxie Engage web page now, um, excuse me, let me get you guys off of my screen so I can see the entire thing. You now have this little button here, migrate to engage. And when you click that, it's gonna pick up uh, the first screen of your migration. Um, where you would tell it whether you want your uh, your market leader, um, i.e. your business builder or in touch with, you know, these are the brand names, but market leaders um, or market leaders, the brand names, business builder is our uh, Century 21 brand name and zap. So you would just go through this process. There is an easy step-by-step -step guide that I published yesterday um, that looks, and this was all on, um, uh, this was all on your Moxie or on the uh, web uh, workplace so that you can literally just step through each one of these steps. It does give you some great tips for, um, you know, some of the steps that you need to take to, to create your groupings and things beforehand, but it is easy and it is differentiated by whether you're doing it from Business Builder or Zap or whatever happen, system you happen to be doing. All right. Any questions on that before we, we get rolling? No. Nope. As far as I know, once you do have the contacts in, I believe you still will need to go in and um, reassign them to your marketing groups and or, well, I don't think you have to do the groups. I think the groups will come, up, come across, but you will have to do your campaigns. Okay. Um, but that's okay. And, and by the way, there's new campaigns being added. I've, I've seen new ones since two weeks ago. Um, so there are campaigns being added all the time. Um, and my initial reaction was the campaigns that were in there were far fewer and less populous than what was available in Business Builder. That's changing pretty quickly, okay? So um, we good with Moxie Engage and the automated migration? Let's move on, horse is dead. Okay, the horse has passed away. So now what I wanna do is kind of regroup and we're going to rewind just a little bit to, to explain how we got to where we are today. And then I'm gonna pick up from today. Again, the goal of today is to try to show you different methods to um, present. One, to prepare, and then we've already gone through the preparation process. So I'm not gonna cover that in any great detail. You can go back to part one and part two of this same series um, to be able to cover that if if you uh, if you're watching this now on online at home, 
go back to part one and part two, watch those. Part three, we'll start with, we've already picked our comps. Now we're going to prepare two different methods of presenting them to our client, okay? Now, one of the things I wanna to suggest to you at the beginning of this is something that I learned very early. Um, the biggest fear, well, I'm, I'm gonna ask you guys, what is your biggest fear when you walk into your client's home? Let's just say, for example, this is a listing um, and you're potentially gonna be listing their home. What is your biggest fear when you're walking into that home? Are they gonna ask you, am I gonna know what to say? when to say it, what if I ask them, you know, how do, how do I carry the conversation? How do I set those expectations? Uh, you know, how do you conduct yourself in a way that both builds rapport, establishes the fact that you are a professional and that you have um, uh, skills and experience to offer to this equation um, and at the same time, feel comfortable, make them feel comfortable, make yourself likable to that person. That was one of the biggest fears that I had when I was walking into somebody's home. And if I was less than prepared for that meeting with them, then my confidence level was lower and I, I would stumble, I would stutter and get lost and where was I just at and let's go back. But if you have a regimented presentation, something that you can always fall back upon and be able to, and if you know it frontwards and backwards to where you can talk about the slide that is on the page without even thinking about it, and I'm not talking about reading the slide to your client. If you walk into a presentation, a listing presentation or any presentation with a client and you put up what I'm gonna show you in just a minute on the screen and you read them every single um, uh, word on that slide, you've lost them. They're, it's gonna go right over the heads and you've lost them. But if you could pull up a slide on, a, on, a, on your laptop and pull out the most salient point on that slide and talk to it as a human being while the slide is in front of them, that's how you build that rapport. That's how you feel, uh, how you get to the point where you're comfortable enough. And so what I would recommend is create your presentation like I'm about to show you how to do. Know that presentation frontwards and backwards when they, when you're in the middle of talking about one of the comps and they say, um, a question about, well, how are you going to, how are you going to market my home differently? Be able to know your presentation well enough to be able to skip right to that slide and, and be able to talk to it immediately from that point. And I'm going to show you some trips, uh, some tips to, on exactly how to do that. All right. So are we good so far? Yeah. All right. Let's roll into this. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go back to here. Alrighty, let me get off of here. So remember where we were last time. Um, we're going to resume with the exact same property. Um, this property down in Gateway Boulevard in Stone Mountain. Um, we've talked about this before. Let's look at the details of the previous listing way back in 2017. Um, it is a four bedroom, two and a half bath home, just under 2,800 square feet built in 2001 on 0.2 of an acre. Back in the day, it was purchased for 216 dollars and $5,000 in, in closing costs. Just for grins and giggles, just as a review, just some minor you know, photography. Here's the thing about this house, and we'll talk about this again here in just a minute. This home is on a slab, and most of the comps that I have found are on um, a basement. So that will be a talking point as we go through this. Okay, everybody familiar? So where we got to the last time, we had gone through in FMLS and we had gone through the selection process and we had settled on these five comps, okay? Um, and, and again, I'm not gonna go through, but we had selected the criteria based off of we're looking for other four bedroom homes. You, meeting all of the same criteria up here, we selected four bedroom homes that were built in within a mile of here that were built within five years of 2001. 
we ultimately selected all of these homes. In hindsight, now that when we started this process, what, almost two weeks ago in part one of this, um, I think two of these were active and, and they have now gone from both from active to active under contract and pending. So that has affected my distribution. Most of these are pending um, and the, the closed, which I tended to weight more heavily in terms of the pricing decision that I've, I'm recommending. Unfortunately, they're now fewer than, than, than the pendings. Uh, in an ideal world, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably pick these same ones because I wanna weight it more heavily towards the, the closed transactions, but for the sake of continuity of our lessons, I'm not gonna reselect um, our, our plans. All right, so it is very, very simple and very easy. One method, and many of you may be familiar with this, so I'm going to relate it to, to this, and then we're going to show you the Moxie way. Many of you have used Cloud CMA. Um, that is a great tool, and I'll just very briefly go through. I'm not going to teach you Cloud CMA, um, but a lot of us have, have used it in the past, but all you do is select your comps. You click your Cloud CMA, and you go through this process to enter um, your subject property, notice the, um, the MLS numbers for all of the comps that we selected back here, all the ones that we put the check mark are going to automatically appear in our exact listings, okay? And then you simply go through the menu process. I'm, I'm not gonna go through each one of these to, to select this. I'm gonna show you what the output looks like, all right? This is the output. And um, when you are in your, your matrix and you are on your dashboard, the best way to get to this, say you show up and you prepared your cloud CMA uh, prior to arriving at your client's home, you simply log on, you click your cloud CMA and it's gonna bring you to this page. And you can either view it live or you can view a PDF and have that PDF printed off, depending on whether or not you're gonna have your laptop open and do this digital or on paper. So let's just, for the sake of argument, let's look at a live presentation of this particular CMA that I did for these cops. It pulls up your main cover page of which you can skip to the various pages on here. Um, and you can also delete a bunch of these pages. You can select which ones you, you include. Uh, just for the sake of argument, I'll just kind of start at the beginning. I haven't fleshed a lot of these out and done a lot of these, and, and obviously I would not use an empty slide with a with my resume on it. A little blurb about your company, what is a CMA, um, the smartest way to sell a home, what is the MLS, marketing action plan. These are some basic, basic slides, but what I'm trying to get to is this one, okay? This is how you present your your comps. This is one way to present it using cloud CMA. And if you like this layout and this, this um, graphic depiction where you have your subject home on the left side and each one of your comparable properties that you've selected across to the top um, and, and oriented in columns, this is gonna look real familiar in just a minute when we look at the same thing in Moxie, okay? But this gives you the ability to side by side compare your subject home with all of the comps that you have selected. You can see all kinds of great details. You can look at the additional ones that are off on the side, on the right and the left. And then if you say, for example, you're like, well, you know what? I happen to know this home is probably your strongest comp because it's literally right down the road from your home. And you want to look at, at this in closer detail. You can select it. You can pull the pictures and start scrolling through all of the pictures. And this gives you the ability to have a great conversation about, uh, about the comps and point out the things that you have selected ahead of time. So remember, I don't know if you remember from our previous conversations, my, my, this particular client, when I was doing my pre-appointment interview, said one of the reasons why he wanted to go, uh, why we wanted to list was he'd seen others in the neighborhood that were listing for 450 and 460. Well, this is the closest comp to him. It listed for 430 and ended up selling for 402 after 
82 days. Okay. So if you don't think that's going to be one of my talking points when this, when I present this comp to him is I don't want you to make the same mistake as this person by going in too high. Okay. The other thing about this house is this was on a basement, mine's on a slab. So that number I might have even been able to justify for a basement. Mm, I can't justify 450 or 460 for the same home minus the basement. <laughs> okay. Y'all with me so far? Yes. Awesome. All right. So you've got all of these, these tools where you can present them to your client. Um, and then you can go down through, then there's some analysis that happens right after you do the average pricing for the actives versus the pendings versus the closed. This is your analytical aspect of it, where you can draw some conclusions, $135 per square foot. Usually you see a linear relationship here. Um, I don't typically talk to these slides too much, but it's nice to know that they're there in case the client asks me a, a specific question that deals with these. You've get, uh, this is one slide that is available in, um, in Cloud CMA that I haven't seen in Moxie or anywhere else yet. And it's the one that compares the Zillow's estimate to the reality. Um, and this one's actually pretty good. So how far off is, how accurate are those estimates? It's in, the, in our case of the, the ones that we selected, it's $33,000 off from reality. Pretty, pretty strong message there, right? So if somebody's telling you, well, my Zillow's estimate value is X, okay? And then you have got a suggested list price and this is something that I prescribed, all right? So I came in here and I said, I, I entered these numbers as my range of values for him to my recommended initial list price. Okay. And that is literally the end of, of that presentation in a cloud CMA. There's a whole bunch of fluff up at the up at the top that I could have added, but in this case I didn't. All right. Yeah, can I just ask? Um, Absolutely. How, how did you enter those numbers? Like is there a section on there where you enter those numbers yourself? Yeah, it was part of part of the, you know, when you're, I, I didn't go through each step of creating the cloud CMA, but one of the slides that one of the views that you have when you're creating the cloud CMA is what is your price recommendation? And you can either put in an exact value, 400,000, or you can put a range of values, which I typically do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I like to present a range of values. Um, and then give the 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 the, the seller the the choice because choice, yeah. and I, I literally say well here's what I would recommend here's the range three ninety to four hundred where you want to go with your initial pricing I would be comfortable anywhere within that range it really comes down to your timeline you know uh, I can show you the relationship of the the lower the the price compared to the market value the quicker it's going to sell so if you've got time to spare and you and your priorities are maximize your value I got time we'll go on the high end of that range yeah. if you need to sell next week we need to go on the low end of that range or even lower than that range it all depends on the client because they're driving the time yeah okay and the great message behind that is look I can I'm in this for the long haul. I'm here. I can sell your house next week. I can sell your house next year. You just got to tell me when you want it, you know, when you want it done and I can, I can deliver that. I just need to know what you want to do so that I can develop the strategy that's going to get us there. Okay. All right. Um, before we launch into how to do what we just did, uh, what I just showed you in Moxie, I want to show you the equivalent product so we can almost side-by-side -side comparison from a cloud CMA to a Moxie present CMA. You wanna see what it looks like? Yes. Um, my hope and desire is that this is going to wet your whistle kind of like it did for me and make you wanna go, ooh, this is good. This makes me look really good. And when you saw the stats, I don't know if you guys saw this when we were, when we were rolling out Moxie and we were talking about Moxie, um, present agents that use Moxie Present have a 70% higher capture rate, um, conversion rate than anybody else. You're about to see why. Okay. And I haven't even really fleshed this thing out to the to the highest degree of what I want to do, and it's still pretty awesome. All right. 
So the same exact presentation um, I have created using my Moxie Present. Um, I wouldn't say the same exact, but for the but the same roughly the same thing for the same property. Um, and it it my Moxie Engage is right here. You just go to your Present and notice even looks familiar because it pulled the picture from uh, from Onride. And takes a minute to gin up. Here we go. All right, so it created the presentation. It is ready to go. All I gotta do is go to this front page. All right, so now you are seeing the presentation. I can go to full screen and I can just start literally going down through. And does this, does this page look familiar? Do y'all recognize this from, from Toolkit CMA? Yeah. Exactly. So it's a lot of the same pages. Some of them have been changed and some of them are different. But now there are, notice I've got um, 52 pages in this presentation. Gonna be perfectly honest with you, 52 pages is too long. I have not gone through and pared this down and built the exact presentation that I would like to, uh, to verbalize. That's going to be something that I'm about to do, and I'm going to create a template when I do. And I'm going to have three different versions of the same template. A long template, a shorter, more compressed version of it that's maybe 18 to 20 pages, and then I'm going to have a comps-only page where I simply pull up the comps. If the client's in a rush or I'm just not getting the feeling from them that they want to uh, you know, hear this entire presentation, I'll do an abridged, abbreviated one. Okay, so I've got some great talking points about Century 21 as a company, how big we are, how awesome we are. Um, my next slide is I'm all ears. What am I here to do? I'm here to discuss why are you selling? When would you like to move? Where are you anticipating your changes and what specific services that I will be providing to you in this process? So, I mean, it, it, these are great slides for you. And again, if you're struggling with what to say, wouldn't it be great if there was something on a screen that kind of guided your entire conversation? As long as you do this in a way that is not um, rote reading to them and conversational, it's a great way to, to, to just pull this conversation. How I propose to work, for, uh, work with you. Great slide. Here's another one, selling your home, the, the factors that go into uh, selling your home, location, competition, timing, condition, terms, price. All of these are major factors that go into this and you can use this as talking points to go into it before you, before you actually present the actual comps. What things make your home valuable, things like staging, curb appeal. A great, again, just great little conversation pieces. Um, which you can expect from Century 21, where we're going to market it, where we're going to put it on uh, on um, online as well as social media. These are some of the the little marketing plans. Again, same same script we had in the other presentation. Your plan of action, and then we're now getting into so well, all that was the fluff. Now we're getting into the actual comps again. So the first page is your property summary of the subject property. So, you know, in this case, I typically go through the details of this and just highlight, okay, you were built in 2001, four bedrooms, under 3,000 square feet, um, basic information. And, and if something is in error here that affected the comps that I selected, this would be the way to clarify this. And you might want to pivot if you've picked the wrong comps. Okay. Next slide, looks familiar, doesn't it? So you've got your subject property here. You've got all of your comps that you've selected across the top, your map of where they physically are, color coded based off of the fact that they're either sold or under contract. Okay, and then let's go to the next slide. And now you see all the details in the same format that we had in Cloud CMA. Pretty cool, huh? So if you've done it in one place, it's gonna be familiar in the other place. All right. 
And again, you can dive into any of the details of any one of these properties. You can select it, it pulls it up. It allows you to do the same photographs the exact same way we did before. Pretty sweet, right? And you can literally go through each one of your comps and present them in this manner. Oh, I didn't even realize you could change your, your view to satellite if you wanted to, as opposed to the map. Sweet. All righty. All right, so let's keep going. Um, so the next slide down the road, we could continue to go over to the other side, but I'm just gonna continue down. Now we've got some, some comparisons to, to take place, um, the anal analysis portion of this. And I like this because it, it actually puts the photographs right next to the addresses of the home, so you don't have to remember that. Okay, so here's where we, where we talked a little bit. This is a less than ideal distribution because I've got more pendings than I do solds. Um, but again, that was kind of artificial because of the time frame that this took place to uh, the several weeks of continuity and teaching this class. But it's kind of nice because you can see, look at days on market, 83 days, 236 days for this particular property. So you can draw some conclusions from looking at the analysis of this. Let's look at the next page, listing averages. So notice this has got it by um, both the pendings and the solds, but if you wanted to differentiate, you could go, let's just look at the pending homes. Pending homes averaged um, 417,000. Let's look at the sold homes. Oh, that's a glitch. Something weird's going on there. There they go. For some reason, it didn't load. But the sold homes only sold for 400000 That kind of sends a message, doesn't it? So what people were, were asking listing is $15,000 than what the most recent sales were. That kind of tells you that maybe some agents are out there still overpricing based off of the market that existed a few months ago than, than what exists now, right? Okay, um, and then you got some analysis where you see some correlations between um, time on the market and days sold. This is actually not a very good analysis because I only have the three sold comps. So I'm gonna kind of gloss over that one. Also a relationship between price and the size of the home. Generally you see a correspondence between the size of the home, the larger the home, the more expensive it is. That's pretty intuitive, right? Um, that's out of place. And then you've got the pricing analysis where, again, the same exact slide, which is the summation of after you've presented all your CMAs, um, the, you, you get to this page. Um, and ideally, in a, real, in, a, in a really good, when I was doing this every single day and, and, um, uh, and going through these literally as an exclusive listing agent, I would get to the, this point. And before I came to this slide, I would literally ask them. So based off of all the comps that I have presented to you, um, do you still think that your value is at, you know, like in this case, I might ask him, do you still think your value is at 450? And see what he comes back with. And oftentimes their number will be at or sometimes even lower than my own number. And then... Imagine how cool it is when they say that number and go, well, my recommendation is boom. And you hit the next slide and that slide comes up and it says 390 to 400. That's the professionalism that you're looking for. And if you're that good and you're that polished in your delivery, you are going to win that listing every single time. Okay. If you can come across confident, professional, having your, having well-prepared, if you're preparing this much to, to come to somebody's home and show them uh, a listing presentation this good, how good of a job are you going to do from that point forward until the closing table? That's the message you want to send. And, and these tools that I'm teaching you are the best way to get there. All right. I didn't even get to the part where we actually create that Moxie presentation. We just looked at it. So hopefully that wet your whistle, 
next time we will um, pick up where we, where we left off there and I will show you to uh, exactly how I prepared that Moxie presentation. Okay. All right. We have run out of time. Thank you all for your attention I, and your diligence in being here. Um, have a great day. Love y'all. Have a wonderful day.